In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to calculate a portfolio variance using Python. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and import uh, several libraries here. We're going to be using NumPy, Pandas, and uh, I'm going to be using uh, Y Finance to download stock data. And then for reference, I have a copy of the formula that you probably see in a lot of finance books. And this is actually an example that they do show in a finance book because you can calculate it by hand pretty easily. And it's only two stocks in the portfolio. All right, so as soon as I add a third stock, this uh, covariance term expands to have to include uh, three stocks. So there's actually six covariance terms in there, and it gets a little cumbersome to calculate uh, using this derived formula. But if we back up here and just use the matrices, we can calculate it pretty easily. And then it doesn't matter how many uh, securities are in the portfolio to do it. All right, so that's what I'm going to be demonstrating here uh, using these five stocks. All right, so I just sort of arbitrarily chose these. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get their data. We'll use Y Finance. It would download the data, and I'll just get the closing prices. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to have to calculate the return. So I'll go ahead and do that instead of variable. Okay, and yeah, I'm using the instantaneous rate of return. Uh, you can use the straight up percent change, but the difference is negligible. Okay, and so I can do more things if I use the instantaneous rate of return, like I can take the cumulative sum to get the performance over a period of time, and I can't really do that with a regular percent change. All right, so the next thing I need is the uh, covariance. So pretty easy to do that here using pandas or even numpy, right? So the function actually comes from numpy. I can just take my returns, covariance, okay, see what that looks like. Okay, and uh, we'll store it in a variable. And, uh, I have to annualize it. Just for comparison, I'm going to arbitrarily set some weights for the, the five securities that we're looking at and calculate a weighted variance and standard deviation from that without considering how they tend to move together. Right? So if they were completely independent, then, oh yeah, sure, I could use just a weighted variance uh, and standard deviation, all right? But since they do tend to, to some degree at least, move together, uh, then uh, we need to consider the covariance. All right, so I'll calculate what we get with uh, independent movement, and then we'll compare it to what we get when we blend the, uh, the covariance in there. Okay, so if I just want the variance of each stock, I can get that, right? And if I annualize it, we can see, okay, that's where the variance is. If I want to see the standard deviation, then I can just take the square root of all this. So I could use MP square root, or I can just raise it to the 0.5. And okay, we can see uh, the volatility of each one of those stocks. If I make up some weights, Okay, so I'm going to heavily weight it towards the S&P 500 and NVIDIA here to get that variance. Then I can use P dot. Okay, so the weighted average function in NumPy. All right, and if I take the square root of that, I'll end up with the portfolio variance. Okay, assuming that these things move independently. Okay, so 33%. All right, so we're going to compare that to what we get when we consider the covariance, and I'm going to use that formula above just to calculate the variance. And again, I'm going to use the numpy dot function. I'm going to take the weights, transpose them, and then I'm going to multiply the result of just the weights and the returns, the covariance there. So that's what we end up with for the variance. And then if I take the square root of that, I'll get the standard deviation. Okay, so now we can see the benefit of security diversification here 
all right, because these things have this tendency to move together or not move together, then uh, it actually reduces the volatility of the overall portfolio. Okay, so I'll be making a copy of this notebook available on GitHub. It'll be in the link in the video. And uh, I'm going to move on and see if we can't calculate a better weighting of these securities. All right, that would maximize some return versus risk measurement. All right, so that'll be a follow-on video. Uh, for now, I hope this helps.